hear deep was calling out to deep and I hear free was calling out to me and you call you calling out to me and I hear the sons calling out to the fathers and I hear the daughters calling out to the mothers and you call calling out to me very grateful to each of you who've been praying for me. Many of you have been praying for me um, through the past um, almost a week now. Wednesday will be a week. Uh, today is Monday. Um, tomorrow night we'll be meeting in our home with many other people. And um, just had my right hip replaced. And um, it's going well. Doing all the therapy for everyone who wants to write me and say, Make sure you do those exercises. They're very important. I promise you, I'm doing the exercises. I have a timer set on my phone and everything else to make sure that I, I keep doing them. So, um, but I wanted, I wanted to reach out to you and just, again, just let you know that I'm here, that we're here, that we're going to still be moving, still going on with a lot of things. But right now, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So glad that everybody who's here is here. I see Darla, Luz Viminda. I don't know if I said that right. Ariana, good to see you. Uh, Vivi, and um, I don't know if I see any more right now, but as they come on, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. So I said a second ago, uh, we're going to be talking about really the end game part three. Um, you're saying, what are you talking about with the end game? Well, what does the church really look like? What does the church look like that Jesus planted? Hi, Ariana. What does it look like if, if we were to live during an era where Jesus was saying, this is what I want my church to look like? What would it look like? What was it that he began 30, 33 uh, AD when he commissioned his disciples uh, that they would be the church? What was he commissioning? We, we know that what he commissioned was incredibly radical. In fact, uh, all but one would lose their lives as a result of, of carrying this gospel. That the church to them wasn't a social club. It wasn't something that uh, was intended to attract um, people to it as a, uh, how can I put it, as a nice way of life. Um, it wasn't just another sense of, of what God had um placed on people we have today many different kind of institutions where they are self-help institutions or things where people are, are are bettering themselves in every way that's not what the church was intended to do the, the church was not only powerful in that it um, it evoked something so radical that it would call people to literally give their whole lives to but it was also so radical that there were many that rejected it, didn't want it, because they knew it would in, infiltrate their very culture and every part of the decisions they would have to make. And so uh, I'm speaking to you now in a very different mode. Um, in the past, there have been many times I've just spoken to try and encourage things, but it has become much more uh, real to me about the person and the call of Jesus and what he called me personally to do and to release on the earth for this period and season that the church is in. Um, he himself called me um, and he himself commissioned me to, um, to something that would re release something powerful across the end time church. And we are watching, we're witnessing things dissolving, things disintegrating, things that are uh, devastating. Um, people have contacted me and said, do you realize your prophetic word right now, even what's going on, uh, where my hips have disintegrated and that, that the Lord is restoring right now, rebuilding, restoring the things that have disintegrated, the things that 
cause the body not to function well. It can't move well. And so the Lord is restoring that. And I, I received that uh, in one sense. I understand that. But I also know that God loves to heal people. And I'm grateful for the healings that he's done on others, both supernaturally, but also even sometimes through the hands of physicians. And I, that's why I appreciate so much that Luke is included in the Bible and other issues that a lot of people um, don't like to admit. But the reality is, is that God works in the way he works, and we're good with that. We're just grateful that he works, grateful that he's faithful to us um, in our lives. But I want to speak to you really specifically and candidly about some things regarding the prophetic. Back in about 2000, um, actually, I can go back further. I can go back to 1991 or two. I began the process of developing prophetic people. And I remember that the, the notion that we would use is that in order to be prophetic, they had to be prophetic. Um, that we didn't want to give them hints and ideas of what was, uh, of, of what was really going on. And I remember one of the first lessons I had for them, I called them on a Sunday afternoon and I called them and I said, um, uh, yeah, I have a decision to make and I need to know what the answer is. Uh, I told them nothing other than that. They said, is that all you're giving us? I said, that's it. That's all I'm going to give you. And they said, wow. Okay. Well, within two hours, another um, one of the prophetic people, um, her name was Dee, she called me and she said, yeah, you received a brown paper package um, uh, in the mail, it contained a gift to your daughter, um, name my daughter, and um, that that the person who gave it was her aunt, and yes, her aunt was involved in witchcraft, and yes, we did need to destroy what was inside there. That was exactly the question we had. We were just wondering, are we, are, are we just missing things? Are we, uh, is our discernment way off that, that uh, we're just being... Um, uh, too dramatic about these things. Well, the Lord very clearly uh, made it true because that's exactly what occurred. We received a brown paper package addressed to my daughter and the, the rest is history. At that point in time, the Lord said, I want you to begin developing prophetic people and I want you to begin developing the prophetic in your own life, which means you don't get to know everything. In fact, as I began traveling early on in Mo, uh, many po people know this. This is in the 2000, 2003, 4, 5. Um, when I traveled, I would not um, uh, usually go into the meetings um, early. I would usually go in late. I would wait in a room by myself uh, where the Lord would be delivering some things to me. And then I would go into the meeting after that fact. And I would sit in the front row so that I couldn't see anybody and couldn't read anybody. And at that point in time, uh, then when people came up to me later on and um, I was ministering to people, I would not let people tell me what was the issue. Um, the Lord t indicated to me very clearly, he says, do not tell them anything. Uh, do not let them tell you anything or you won't be prophetic. And so that was where that all began for me. I began something called Prophet's Chamber in about 2005. Um, we ended up doing, we've, we've done that now. We still have uh, a quasi part of that. Uh, so we've been doing it for about 20 years at this point in time, where we've been raising up training prophetic people. Very different than what is being taught in a lot of the mainstream, uh, even charismatic circles and Pentecostal places. And the reason um, it's different is because we're not trying to develop a, a gift of encouragement in people. Uh, much of the body of Christ, much as what, what has been trained as uh, prophetic, is encouragement. Um, and I'm not against encouragement. The, in Romans, it speaks very clearly to encourage each other. Um, other books of the, uh, the Colossians, I think it is, is encouraging each other while it's still day. Um, there, is, there are other things where Paul speaks. And, and, and so we can always encourage each other. We must always encourage each other. Why? Because it's important to encourage each other because people need encouragement. Uh, people get discouraged. People get depressed. So I have no issues with that. But I do have an issue with just simply calling the gift of encouragement the gift of prophecy. And the reason is, is because the gift of prophecy to me holds a much higher place than that because mm, actually it's the premier place. And I'm going to go through some passages of scripture. One of them is quite lengthy, but I want to go through it because I want, I want to teach you. I want you to grow in this, to understand what the end game is. That the end game will be 
filled with prophecy. It will be unbelievable what is going to be happening prophetically. Uh, I realize some of the failures of the past in prophetic ministry. I understand both the people who failed. I understand those who have succeeded. I understand those who had moral failures. Um, the fact that somebody has a moral failure does not diminish um, even the truth that they may carry. Um, a pastor who may have pastored you and fathered you for 30 years um, may have a moral failure. That doesn't mean that everything he taught you was inadequate and or good. Um, he may have taught you everything that was good and how to follow Jesus, but you made a decision um, to uh, to turn that away and to run away from that um, and just basically blame him for that. Today, there are movements that some are seemingly disintegrating um, because of failures of individuals. I want you to know that not everything that was taught was intended to disintegrate, but yet some will let that happen and they will absolutely throw out babies with bathwaters. Um, that is exactly what happens. And, um, and just to help you understand what that, uh, where, where even that terminology came from way back, um, I think it was medieval period, that uh, the men got to use the water first and then the women um, and then the children and, and everybody else in the house. And last of all was the baby. And the water was so dirty by that point that many times people would, would forget about the fact that there's a baby in there and throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, we're not going to throw any babies out with any bathwaters. Um, there's some people who definitely hit some error. Branham hit some crazy error. He believed he was, he believed he was the Elijah of God at the end of his life. That's crazy error. Um, there's others who had other errors. I, I do not in any way adhere to the errors. But there were things that occurred through their lives that were brilliant, that were absolutely from the Lord. They couldn't have done it had it not been the Lord. Um, and I understand some people say, well, they were using by, they were going with um, all kinds of familiar spirits and all kinds of things. Well, you can always do that, but I can promise you that those of you who've never functioned in the supernatural will always blame the enemy for things that have nothing um, to do um, with God, but they're a big part of your unbelief and uh, that you've never experienced this, so therefore it doesn't happen. And I'm sorry you haven't experienced it, but the truth is, is that we have a very, very, very supernatural God. I've watched him touch people's lives. I've watched him reveal people's secrets. I've watched him give me dreams that people have had um, three nights in a row. I've, 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 I've seen people come out of wheelchairs. I've seen the blind eyes see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the mute speak. And we've seen, obviously, so many come to know Jesus and fall in love with him. Uh, we've even seen the dead raised. And so all those things are very much a part of God. You can't, you know, the devil's not going to raise the dead just to help you. Um, that's not something that he does. Um, he is the dead. And um, so I just want you to be aware of that. As we go through this, I am pushing, pushing very clearly a different agenda than you think. A, a different um, ability for you to understand that that what God has intended for the prophetic and for these end times is very, very, very supernatural. There's not a piece of this that won't be supernatural. And so your biggest, your biggest cue is when people begin coming against the supernatural, you can say, well, that definitely is the enemy trying to shut down what God is doing. Because what God does is a joy and a delight to all, all who know him. Um, so basically, I said prophetic in the body today is basically encouragement. There's only small portions of a lot of words that are supernatural at all. Very, very few. It's important to understand that the prophetic ministry should directly reflect Jesus, not the prophet, but Jesus. And um, in Revelation 19.10, it says this. It says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That means that at the end of the day, a true prophetic word will sound like Jesus just showed up in the room, spoke something into somebody's life that there's no way that that person could have known, and he used them completely, completely as a vessel of his. That they simply channeled 
Jesus into that room. That Jesus came and had a word for somebody to strengthen, to encourage, to give them hope, give them direction, and everything. Today, we have changed a lot of that. Uh, we're looking for all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, where does character play into the prophetic? I want to I want to just mention this. Your character matters. Does that mean that a person who has bad character can give a prophetic word from the Lord? Yes, absolutely. Jesus used donkeys in the past, and he can use you. Uh, he can use me. He can use people who fail. God is not limited, not limited to our architecture, our personal take. And sometimes we don't like it. In fact, sometimes God releases the greatest words through the most insignificant. I've been given words from, from uh, little boys who've been mentally retarded. I have been, I don't know if that's a kosher word to use anymore. Um, I don't, I've been given words from little children that you think are just being silly, but their words have been accurate. God can use whatever he wants to use, and he does use it very often. Where does immaturity play? into the prophetic call. Well, I believe immaturity plays into all the gifts of the Spirit. Anybody can function in all the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts are given. Their gifts are given. The gifts are given. You didn't earn them. You haven't succeeded to a certain place in your walk with God where you've succeeded now in your gifting, and now you have been um, uh, given a, a promotion into a gift. That, those gifts are not promotions. Those gifts are simply things that God has placed within you to release. Uh, does that mean you're mature? No, it doesn't mean you're mature. You can be very immature and you can deliver, deliver an incredibly profound, unbelievable uh, prophetic word uh, into a person's life with great, with great accuracy and with great maturity. That maturity wasn't yours. The maturity was the Lord's. You just simply were a voice at that moment in time. So I want you to understand that because until people begin understanding that, they're going to begin following people based upon what they see as their level of accuracy and not the level of their character and their maturity in the Lord. Remember, at the end of the day, God's not really looking for gifted people. He can gift, any, he can gift a donkey. What God's looking for is he's looking for mature. He's looking for fathers. He's looking for mothers. He's looking for those who give the wisdom, those who know the ways of God. That's, that to me is my, my, my hiding place where I go in, in 1 John where he says, listen, he says, I've written to you young children uh, because your sins have been forgiven. Yay, we're saved. I've written to you young men because you've overcome the evil one. Oh, I can kill. I take out demons. I'm a demon slayer. I'm a, ah, I can do all this stuff, all these signs and wonders. That's a young man. I write to you old men because you've known him who has been from the beginning. Mm. At the end of the day, you want to know people who've known God, who's been from the beginning, the ways of God, not just the works of God, not just the miracles of God, the ways of God, that they've walked with God, they've been with God for a long time. And so maturity plays very much into that. And then we have to ask the question, who are you looking to in the prophetic ministry? When you see prophetic ministry, are you immediately positioning yourself around a personality? Somebody's ministry? Are you looking for people who are giving certain kinds of answers? Answers, uh, maybe you're looking for answers for the election today or the, this year. Maybe you're looking for election uh, for, for, for words about our nation. What's going to happen? Uh, is our nation under judgment? Maybe you're looking for words about ministries that um, maybe be behind all your facade. You, you actually want them to fail. Maybe you're looking for words that are against people who don't articulate things the way you do. And they get mad at the way you do things. And so you're looking for specific kinds of prophetic ministries. So we have all these different streams of where people are running for prophetic words. It's unbelievable to me. And so it depends on who you want to hear today. It depends on what you want to hear today. And people have positioned themselves like that. True prophetic words, I want you to know, will cut through all of that. True prophetic words come from the heart of the Father through His Son, Jesus, 
and they absolutely bring about a different kind of disposition where you cannot ignore it. You don't, it, you don't care if it comes through a very conservative voice or a very Pentecostal voice or charismatic. You don't care if it comes through a Catholic. If it's a word of the Lord, you know it and you feel it and everything inside of you resounds and goes, oh my gosh, that was the Lord. That's what you want. The real prophetic ministry that God has for his body today is going to be found not in specific kinds of voices who are carrying certain kinds of ministries, but in those who diligently seek the Lord to know what is your heart, what is your mind. Tell us through, through the ages, what have you been planning for this age, Father? What is it that you're doing now? What are you doing in the hearts and lives of people? Because we know you love them. We know you do not want any to perish, that you want all to be saved. We, we want that. We want all that. But Lord, what do you want for us today? I want you to start by going to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And in 1 Corinthians 14, we've just come through 1 Corinthians 13. Incidentally, 1 Corinthians 12 reveals the gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 embellishes on those gifts and what is most important. But 1 Corinthians 13 is the way that the gifts should be released, always, always. If gifts are not released in love, shut up. You have, I don't care how right you think you are. If you don't love the people you're prophesying to, you are not a part of this body of Christ because this body of Christ is his body. It's not our body. It's not ours to judge. It's not ours to become um, it, indicting to. It's, it's not ours to, um, to judge and say they shouldn't uh, be in the body of Christ. And my gosh, if you don't carry love, you have no business doing any ministry at all. At all. The first place you have to go is to love. If you're not willing to love, then don't try in any way to be a prophet, to be an evangelist, to be a pastor, to be an apostle, to be a teacher, none of them. None of them. Don't, don't, don't strive for that because you will just hurt people. You will have carnage behind you and not a wake of his presence. And you want a wake of his presence behind you. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in its tongue doesn't speak to men, but to God. Um, indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. Now, I'm going to be the first one to tell you, I speak in tongues a lot. I love speaking in tongues. And some of you might might be like, I don't ever see you speaking in tongues. Oh, you might see me a little bit go chic out of it. You might see that a little bit on here. But but the reality is, is that this entire time I'm speaking to you, I am praying in the spirit right now. I'm praying under my breath the whole time that when I'm in worship, I'm, I'm worshiping and I'm singing in the spirit that, that, that there are times that I'm sitting around and people think you're not doing anything. Oh, I am communing with the Lord. I love tongues. I love it. It cost me most when I, when I finally spoke in tongues at the age of, I think I was 22 when I spoke in tongues. Um, it, it cost me, it cost me all my friends. For, for a period of time, it cost me family. It cost me a lot of things. And, and I went, man, this is a very expensive gift. But you know what I've learned? It's, it's my radar. It's my antenna. It's my ability to get into the presence of God. It's beautiful. I love, I love tongues. I love dearly. So anyways, I follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. And, uh, and then it says, indeed, no one understands the utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, let me just put something in here, okay? Just really quickly. It's very interesting because in the body of Christ, we've been taught, mm, don't, don't dare prophesy marriage. Don't dare prophesy location. Um, don't dare prophesy uh, moving. Um, and, and yet I look in the scriptures and um, 
I go, wait a second. Um, I, that's what I see in scripture. That's what I see in scripture. You, you're given prophetic words everywhere. There's always prophetic words. Why do we, why are we seeing prophetic words that give these things? And then we're told, no, don't ever give those things. And I guess it's just because we're not as good. That's what most people believe, that we're never going to be able to hear God the way they heard them throughout the whole Bible. But we're just supposed to accept that. Well, I don't think so. I just think that prophetic people have to be called to a much higher level. That when those words are given, when, when God is speaking about names, when he is speaking about births, when he's speaking about location, when he's speaking about moving, when he's speaking about marriage, that somebody better be hearing from God and not their own ideology. But we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. So go to 1 Corinthians 12 now. We're backing up. Verse 27. Now you're the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, <coughs> God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second prophets, then third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. So these are all lifted, listed as things that people get to do. We all get to do these things, but we don't all get to do these things. Because he says here, are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all, do all work miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. I could say, do all have administration? No. We could add in the other ones that he spoke about as well. Do all carry gifts of helps? No. But eagerly desire the greater gifts. And then he says, I show you now a more excellent way. And he goes into love. So the truth is, could you turn that down a tiny bit? So, sorry about that. And so now I will show you the most excellent way. What's the most excellent way? The most excellent way is love. So let's figure out how we get to that place. But we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 23. And to me, this part, is the most disconcerting part we have. And the reason I say it's disconcerting is because, wow, it appears to have judgment all over it. <coughs> but it's not judgment for God's people. It's judgment for prophets. Concerning the prophets, my heart is broken within me. All my bones tremble. I'm like a drunken man, like a man overcome with wine because of the Lord and his holy words. Verse, verse 9, I'm sorry. The land, verse 10, the land is full of adulterers because of the curse. The land lies parched and the pastures of the, in the desert are withered. The prophets follow an evil course and use their power unjustly. Both prophet and priests are godless. Even in my temple, I find their wickedness, declares the Lord. Therefore, their path will become slippery. They will be banished to darkness and there they will fall. I will bring disaster on them in the year they are punished, declares the Lord. Among the prophets of Samaria, I saw this repulsive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. Now, let me just explain to you. Baal was worshipped through the sacrifice of children. Um, there were other things. They, had, they also had grains. They had a harvest. And it was to give them a good crop. It was to increase their money. Um, that was basically what Baal was worshipped for. That's why when the first calf was made at, the, at Mount Sinai, they threw all their jewelry, they threw their money, they threw everything at it. And as a result of that, out came this cow. It didn't come out. They formed it. They forged it. And as a result, that was going to be their god of money. Let me explain something. When people are begging for money and they are functioning prophetically, stop listening to them. Why am I saying that? Because that is absolutely pathetic and it is not prophetic. It is, it is abhorrent. Abhorrent. 
When people give words and they say, if you have a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, I'll give you a prophetic word. That's abhorrent. That absolutely smacks in everything taught throughout scripture, Old and New Testament. That the, the thing that occurs from taking money as a result of a word or a miracle or anything like that, you commit the sin of Gehazi, who when he committed that sin, and understand, it wasn't the person who gave the money. Are you with me? It was the one who wanted the money. They died. He had leprosy. The leprosy that was on that that king came all over all over Gehazi. And he sold he basically sold his soul because he knew that he could make a good ministry this way. He could make a life this way. And there are many people I want you to know that really believe that ministry is about money. You know, they don't understand that really ministry is about giving your life. And the likelihood is that you probably won't end up with a lot. Why? Because you love being like Jesus. You love giving. You're generous. The houses that you buy that are beautiful end up pretty beat up because you've had so many meetings in them that they've been used by God's people because you want to bless them. I want you to understand that ministry, ministry is not intended to embellish you. It's just simply fulfilling the call of Jesus on your life. Some of you may not like that, but I'm just telling you that. People are saying, well, can't, you know, is God against wealth? No. God is pro-wealth. But what do you do with the wealth? If you're using your wealth simply for yourself, you've missed the point. Wealth is not for you. Wealth is for the kingdom. Wealth is to send the seed of the word around the world. That's what wealth's for. And so these prophets of Samaria were worshiping and they were giving prophetic words by the spirit of Baal. Money. Money. They led my people astray. And among the prophets of Jerusalem, I've seen something horrible. They commit adultery and live and lie. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns from his wickedness. They're all like Sodom to me. You know, one of the things that I, I really worry about is when I begin seeing bodyguards hanging out with people who love Jesus. I worry about it. I understand there's some people that may be in danger, and I understand the, the, the beauty of having people around who, who love you and protect you. But, um, but Jesus was completely accessible. And we have to understand that, that Jesus is accessible. Jesus is always, 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 always accessible. And we have his pe as his people have to be always, always, always accessible. Sometimes not even when we want to be accessible, but we have to be accessible. Why? Because Jesus was, and he demonstrated for us exactly how we should be with other people. He goes on, and he said, um, therefore, this is what the Lord says. Says concerning these prophets, I will make them eat bitter food, drink poison water, because the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout the land. Wow. This is what the Lord says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. I, w I wonder if some of the prophetic words that are being released right now are just false hope words. I'm not saying God's giving bad hopes. I mean, to me, my God's extre extremely hopeful. and I know him and I walk with him. So I have a lot of hope. I'm not worried about finances. I'm not worried about anything because God's my God. Does that mean that I think everything is just going to economically turn around and ship shape and everything's going to be beautiful? Mm, I don't know if I believe that. Do I, do I believe that, that maybe somebody will get in government and it's going to change the whole story? I, I actually have never believed that. I don't think that government is our answer. I think Jesus is. And he made it pretty clear to himself and to, I'm sorry, to, to his disciples and everybody else that he was the answer that 
there's no way to the Father except through him. And if anybody else is trying to get somewhere else, I don't know why you're trying to go somewhere else. I, my, my hope is that you get to the Father uh, because honestly, that's the only viable, important facet of life is getting to the Father and then doing whatever the Father wants you to do. I think it's pretty simple, pretty, pretty straightforward. And he says, no, they keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says, you will have peace. And to all those who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word? See, the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down as the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. Now, let me just make this really clear to you. This whole story is not about the American dream. This whole story is not about economic incredibleness for everybody. This whole story is not even about our own lives. This whole story is about Jesus. <coughs> the whole story. The whole story is about Jesus. When we don't understand that the whole story is about Jesus, boy, we, we go after everything. We just, we're missing the point. This whole story is about Jesus. Prophetic ministry is about Jesus. Apostolic ministry is about Jesus. Pastoral ministry is about Jesus. Evangelistic ministry is about Jesus. Teaching, teachers, and that ministry is about Jesus. Every single one of the fivefold is about Jesus. It's not about something else. It's about Jesus. It's bringing the life of Jesus into, into every life. Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's all that we're working on. We're trying to get Christ in you to be the hope of glory. Not money, not the ease of life, not things that are perfect. Christ in you. Wow, let's go on. I bet you haven't heard this in a prophetic word recently, have you? It's funny how we avoid certain things. And we avoid them because, hmm, doesn't sound very pleasant. It's, this is in the book. This is right there. This is from Jeremiah. The, until the purposes, until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come, you will understand it clearly. Guess what? Right now. These are the days to come. I didn't send these prophets. Yet they've run with their message. I didn't speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they'd stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. We have prophets who've they've gone off the deep end. They're in somewhere else. We've had prophets who've committed suicide. We have, wow, we, we have quite a menagerie of, of things that have occurred, quote unquote, to prophetic people. I'm going, were these people who were in the counsel of God? Were these people who were in the council of God, were they listening to God? And I realize what I'm saying right now, and I realize I'm in a very dangerous place to speak what I'm speaking, because I know some of you are going, what are you saying, Danny? And I'm, I'm just saying, I understand the holiness and the, the place that God is. I understand what it is that he pours into our lives and what we can never withhold and hold back. We have to go. We have to share. We have to speak what he says. Let's go on. I didn't speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they'd stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and their evil deeds. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can anyone hide in the, in the secrets so that I cannot see him? So we prophesy about another country somewhere that something might happen. Personally, one, one of the things I've become very aware of is that the prophets in the Old Testament all found themselves living in the very land to which they prophesied, or at least one of the lands in which they prophesied where there was negative stuff. They had to actually reveal the fact that God, God was going to come through for them, even though, as they were delivering this word, that even though they were living in a land where earthquakes and all kinds of things would happen, uh, you want you to know something? God has called me to some nations on this earth where I know there are going to be some pretty rough things. I'm living in one of them. 
And I know I will be here when it happens. But I know God will sustain me through that time. Why? Because I prophesied about that time. I've declared it. I've spoken. And I've spoken about the goodness of God in the land of the living even then. Even then. Let's go on. I've heard what prophets say who prophesy lies in my name. They say, I had a dream. I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell uh, one another will make my people forget my name, just as their fathers forgot my name through ball worship. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has the word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord, is not my word like fire, and declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Listen, when the word of the Lord comes, it shatters. It moves in and it takes over and it doesn't matter what anybody has said. All of a sudden you go, uh, that was the word of the Lord. Therefore, declares the Lord, I'm against the prophets who steal from one another's words supposedly from me. Do you know that happens all the time now? People, it's amazing. I will hear so many people saying the same words, but there's one that it comes out with first and then it just begins this whole stream. I'm, I've, I've learned, I, I don't even watch some of the things you watch. I don't listen to what you listen to. I, I don't read the things you listen to. You know why? I, I want to go into the counsel of the Lord. I know what I'm called to be. And if I'm called to be that, I'm not called to some kind of a democracy to figure out what, what the correct word is. That's not how God calls his servants ever. Indeed, I'm against the, oh, he says, uh, yes, declares the Lord. I'm against the prophets who wag their own tongues and yet declare the Lord declares. Indeed, I'm against those who prophesy false dreams, declares the Lord. They tell them and lead my people astray with their reckless lies, yet I didn't send them or appoint them. They did not benefit these people in the least. When these people or a prophet or a priest ask, what is the oracle of the Lord? Say to them, what oracle? I will forsake you, declares the Lord. If a prophet or priest or anyone else claims this is the oracle of the Lord, I'll punish that man and his household. This is what each of you keeps on saying to his friend or relative. What's the Lord's answer? What has the Lord spoken? I'll stop there. You can read on if you want. But there's a disgrace that's coming on those who falsely prophesy. What do I mean by false prophets? I mean, they're making things up. They're creating their own ministries. Now, there are some that I want you to know. They're true prophets. Some of you don't even like my true prophets. You don't like who they are. You just can't believe anybody could be that supernatural. And some of you gotten angry at them and called them false prophets. But I think you're the one that's worried that maybe you're going to lose your ministry because God's raising up real prophets on the earth prophets who've been in the council of the lord prophets who've been in the council of the lord who've heard him prophets who god speaks to prophets who god sends messengers in the night like he did old and new testament prophets who speak the very words of the lord apostles who are don't, only doing what they're doing because they know they've been commissioned by the Lord Jesus himself. I think a lot of false stuff's about to fall. I think that we're going to stop teaching about the fivefold to try and get people to become a part of them and wondering how many apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers in our network. And we might be going down, way down, way down. Or we say, God, raise up the real. God, in my own life, only allow the real to be revealed. Only allow what really is your word to come out of my words, out of my mouth. My goal is to be like Jesus. Not be Jesus, but be like Jesus. I can only say what I hear my father speak. I can only do what I hear or what I see my father doing. Who are you to be any less than that? 
who do we think we are? People go around with all kinds of titles emblazoned on them. Oh my gosh. Promotions, who they are. I'm a son of the living God. I'm a child of my father. I'm a servant. And he is my master. And he is my friend. And he is my brother. And I may have been called to apostle. And I may have been called to prophesy. And I may have been called to teach and pastor. And I may have been called to evangelize. But who I am. I'm a son. I want to invite you to be a son today. Give up ministry. Give up your desire for promotion and being somebody. You are somebody. Jesus has called you. And it doesn't matter what you do if you follow him. You'll receive the reward at the end the same as anyone who is faithful. Well done. Well done. You won't get well done, apostle. You won't get well done, prophet. You won't get done well, well done, pastor, well done, evangelist, or well done, teacher. You won't get a well done for that. You'll get a well done for my son. These are end day things. These are the things to talk about in the end of days. What will the church look like? Oh my God, it will be supernatural. It will be filled with fire. We will feel the absolute intimidation of the very presence of God who enters a room where we realize every secret of our heart can be laid bare. And yet he loves us. He loves us. He is so good. I love you all. I'm going to pray for you right now. I want to thank you all for praying for me. I'm on the end of week one from my uh, right hip being replaced. And I still have my left hip. And uh, right now that date is set for April 10th. But we'll... We'll see what happens. If God does something miraculous and moves it quicker, that's great. But I'm grateful. So grateful. Oh, my goodness. The difference I feel is amazing. God is good. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, by the way, let me just say, I've seen people with bad hips healed. I've seen people with all kinds of metal in their bodies. I have smelled metal burning out of their bodies after they've had replacements. My God is able to do all of that and more. Thank you for praying for me and for my family. Holy Spirit, right now, we release, Lord, over every person watching this, whether it's live now or whether they're watching, Lord, um, later on. Some people, Lord, it's the middle of the night. Some people, it's uh, going to be tomorrow or the next day before they watch it. But I'm asking God, wherever you take this message, that your voice, your voice would sound loudly. Lord, that you will absolutely cause fake stuff, foolish stuff, to fall be before you, Lord. That you'd raise up the true supernatural. That you raise up absolute prophetic stuff that looks supernatural in every regard. Nobody schmoozing. Nobody reading people. Just the very word of the Lord. People who've been in the counsel of God. Lord, I'm asking that you raise up right now a generation of those who will seek for the counsel of God. They will go after you. Not go after men. Not go after streams. Not go after the new word. The new published thing. The, the, the new one that's on this list. Father, they, they will go after you. They will go after you. They will go after you. Lord, thank you for calling me to this period of time in history. That is so important to you. And so, Father, it's, it's important to all of us. We all want to be a part of everything you want us to do. I pray, Father, for obedient sons and daughters. I pray for people who will just follow you with their whole heart. Bless them all. Bless them all. In Jesus' name.
to the waterfall Deep calls, deep calls to deep Deep calls, deep calls to deep Deep calls, deep calls to deep Under the waterfall, under the waterfall Deep, 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 deep calls to deep Deep, deep, deep calls to deep Deep, deep, deep calls to deep 